All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give our praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakadash. Dharana said, Yahweh, the Prophet, so great meal, so the time is truth and rule well. Peace, blessings, salutation, the Akim out there, scattered rocks of the form, of the earth, that's the only truth, not true sincerity. So I say, Shalom. This is Ben Nabala coming to you in the video of the Spirit. And this video is basically going to be about how Esau is going to perish because of what he has done to this world, okay? Esau has completely just destroyed the earth and has continued to destroy the earth, okay? And especially now, you know, the, what he's doing, you know, with these um these train derailments that's supposed to be releasing these chemicals, you know, he's he's out here contaminating the earth and he's trying to kill people. He's trying to fulfill what he had in those Georgia millstones, which is, I believe, get the, get the population under 500 million. Okay, so he's trying to, he's trying to, um, he's trying to execute that. But ultimately, what is he trying to do? He's trying to, he's trying to play God. He's trying to play like he's the most high. You know, he wants to have control like that, but that's not for you to have, you know. There's only one, and his name is Yahweh. So you will never be on his level, but the fact that Esau wants to be on that level and is jealous of God and wants what God has is a problem, okay? And you have to... You have to be taken down for that and not just taken down for that, but you have to be done away with at that because that is a completely wicked way of thinking. And we understand through reading the scriptures and just seeing throughout history how Esau deals like he, he is never enough for him. And even if he is, you know, free brought down and taken down, you know, that spirit is not going to be taken out of him where he's going to want to rebel and, and, and try to fight back. So. That's why he has to be made an example at the end of the, at the end of this road. Um, this is Numbers thirty five and three. It says, "So ye shall not pollute the land where ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it." Kind. So we understand here in America, you know they they shed a lot of blood in this place, and they continue to do that, you know, to this day. And this land cannot be cleansed of the blood that was shed in this place, but by the blood of them that shed it. And who shed the blood in this place? Um, the Edomites, or the so-called white man. You know, they 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 did, they've done the most killings here in America. Okay, they're they're the, <laughs> they're the um how do I want to say this? They're the um, you know how um they got America's ones wanted, and they got the uh, top ten. He's also the top number one uh killer uh, in history, okay? So that he has to he has to pay for that. And and his time is coming, okay? He has to the time is gonna come when the Lord when the Lord returns, he's gonna kill a lot of you Edomites, okay? And, and it's not gonna be pleasant. You know, you're gonna have a very painful, painful death. So you and and, and some and most most of it's gonna come from the nuclear destruction. And you have to feel that that death by pain, which is gonna be from that from that fire, that lake of fire. That's a very that's a tough way to go out. But even before that, you know, the Lord's gonna judge a lot of you Edomites and take you out in all different type of ways on this side before it even gets to that point. And it's it's gonna be gruesome. Okay? Just so you can have a little taste and feeling of of some of the things that you did to us here. But the ultimate judgment of you is gonna happen when you're in the kingdom, you know, when when you Edomites have to serve slavery. Okay, that's that's when you're going to really feel pain and, and, and really feel and understand what we went through. Um, it's Isaiah 32 and 7. It says, The instruments also of the churl are evil. He does he devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speak it right. Kind. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Kind. He's, he's destroying the, the poor, the needy. Okay, because we understand he's trying to make a two class society, but even even with that being said, you know, just the the laws, just the the system that Esau has set up here, you know, is not meant for us to prosper in this place. Okay, and and he he tries to make it seem like, you know, everybody has a chance and everybody can do this and the third, but ultimately we don't. Okay, we're 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 in a system of oppression. Okay. And oppression towards who? The Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the Israelites, okay, the true chosen people of the Bible. That's mainly who Esau is attacking and, and wants to oppress, but also everybody else, you know, even his own. 
Okay, Esau doesn't even care about his own. Okay, that's how that's the type of person this is, and that's why this person has to be. That's why Esau has to be taken out of rulership because that's not judging righteously. Okay, it's, that's not dealing in balance. Okay, the, the scriptures say a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, and Esau doesn't deal in balance. Okay, you have a Edomite who will probably commit a crime. They probably get probation or or a little slap on the wrist, but Jake would commit probably the same crime and they are, Esau are ready to lock him up and throw away the key. I'm going to come over here and grab Psalms, Psalms 55 and 21. It says, The word of his, of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war is in his heart. His words were sharper than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Kind. And that's that's what just goes back home to what I was speaking on. You know, Esau trying to make it seem like he's cool with Jake. You know that he rock with Jake, but deep down, he war is in his heart. He's trying to figure out, not trying to figure out. He's trying, well, he's trying to figure out ways how to kill Jake. You know, you know. He, I mean, if he wanted to, he'd go out here and just, you know, just murk Jake. But you know, it'll be a lot of clapback from that. But he's trying to figure out other crafty ways to try to take Jake out. That's why one of the things they came up with was this pandemic, which is really a pandemic, and then after that. Uh, they implemented the solution, which is the juicy juice, which they know that if they if they was able to strike fear in you, they are able to make you to conform to, uh, you know, relying on them, you know, for the solution, which is the juicy juice. And it is taking and it is basically doing what it's supposed to do is it's been taking out a lot of people, uh, old and young, you know, especially the younger generation. A lot of young people are dying from heart attacks and having cardiac arrest. Like, you never heard stuff like this happening in history before, but it's happening now. Okay, that's because he is trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to fulfill his agenda. Okay, and that's why he has to be taken down, and that's why he has to be done away with. That's why he will perish for the things he's doing, because he's doing completely wickedness in this place. That's why in Second Edgers, um, chapter fifteen. It says, for wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Kind. You know, Esau is completely, um, completely just filled this earth with complete weakness. Okay? And the Lord, the Lord is tired of it. He's fed up. But everything has to happen in his time. So it's not time for the Lord to come up against Esau yet. Okay? It's not time for it's not time for us to have our chance with Esau yet, okay? But it's coming and it's coming real soon. We just have to be patient and wait on it. Um, let me grab this. This is Hebrews twelve, and uh, verse sixteen. It says, "Let it says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau." Let's grab these words. Let's run a blue letter. Fornicator, a man who prostitutes his body to another's lust of hire. A male prostitute, a male who indulges in unlawful sexual intercourse. A fornicator. Let's grab the other word. Because Esau. Yeah, he 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 pushes that 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 alphabet lifestyle. Okay, but also what he also what has a, a, other philosophies as well. Okay, it says accessible, lawful to be trodden, a place is profane, unhallowed, common, public place of men, ungodly. Okay, so what well, Esau is an ungodly person. Okay, he doesn't he doesn't truly believe in Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Okay, he's really up, and I'm gonna read it, but he's really upset about his birthright. That he sold and gave away. Okay? So he doesn't have the spirit. Ultimately. But what? He's trying to take the spirit from us. He's trying to take the blessing from us. Because he doesn't have it. It says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. Ah, so Esau, even if he received a blessing, he would not have repented. Okay? That just shows you the type of person Esau is. He 
He doesn't, he's not seeking repentance from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay, he wants to continue to, to live this wicked lifestyle. And he, and he think that, like the scriptures say, he, he think that um, his house is going to continue forever. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture. You know, he, he doesn't think he's going to get brought down. He, he think he's untouchable. That's why the Lord, we have to wait on Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai to bring this man down. Because we're not physically capable of doing it right now. And it's not for us to do. We have to wait for Yahweh Shai to come and and um put his indignation on these people. Okay? And then when he beams up up and changes them new bodies, put his fury inside of us so we can understand truly the wrath that, that we're and truly truly understand the wrath that we're gonna be have to be coming down on these people. Okay? Like we're we're mad now, but when when Yahweh Shai Shai really pissed that fury inside of us and that rage and, and it put us in remembrance of things that Esau has done throughout the years and be able to to see those things is is gonna it's not gonna be a question of why we're doing it. It's gonna be um rightly uh what's the word I just had? It's gonna be rightly justified. Because like like the brothers talk about you didn't have to yeah, you, you took us you took one thing you touched the Lord's people, okay? And you and you and you stole our identity. You're not gonna repent from that. Then when you when you when you brought us over here and put us in slavery, you know, you you completely broke us. You completely broke us. You had to discontinue from our heritage. Like you 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 brought us to the low of the low. But what? You got Edomites out here who don't wanna be held accountable for that. You wanna wanna say that that wasn't them, that was their for far that happened years ago, but they don't even want. They don't. They don't see. They still, yeah. They know it happened, but they're not sorry for it. They don't. They're not. They don't want to repent from that because what? They still the elites and the higher up. They still they reap benefits from that, from slavery. I know, and they're, and they're still and they still I'm um, living off those benefits to this day. That's why, in this scripture right here, this has to happen. Cause you you have to understand how we feel, even though you're you're not gonna truly get it, but it's gonna be you gonna you gonna get a taste of it. As this is Revelation thirteen and nine. It says, "If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth in captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword." Here is the patient and the faith of the saints kind. So you lead us in captivity, you're going to go into to captivity. You killed us with the sword, you will be killed with the sword, okay? Everything that you have done unto us, we're going to do unto you. That's why in uh, Revelation, I believe, 18, it says reward unto her double, okay? And it's talking about America. America is 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 America is a country that, that, that flooded the whole earth with with her philosophies. And got the whole herb basically falling after um, her lifestyle. That's why the scripture said recording to her double. So, yeah, we're going to pay back, but it's going to be, we're going to pay back. The payback is not going to be, it's not going to match up, okay? Because we're going to really have do a number on you because you did a number on us and it's only right. That's the, that's going to be the righteous judgment from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh So, um, that's pretty much it. You know, he saw why you can't still can continue to live it up. Enjoy, you know, but the time is coming where you're going to be brought down. The time is coming where you're going to be put in slavery. And after a thousand years, you're going to be done away with and you're going to perish. And you're going to be made as an example for these other nations so they can understand that. To, 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 first off, we're going to be teaching them our ways and our lifestyle. So tell them what happens if they... They want to conform to that and they want to try to rebel against it, what's going to happen, and to also strike that fear in them so they won't ever think about um, going against us either. So, Lord willing, this video is edifying. I'm going to close out by giving our praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakadash, Shalom.